So my name is Lisa Mann. I um, teach English here at Holyoke Community College, and I am honored and excited to introduce poetry reading today from Voices from Inside. So I first learned about Voices from Inside through a student in one of my English classes, a really powerful writer, over a decade ago. And since then, I've witnessed and shared the power of the women's poetry through adopting their books in my English classes, volunteering as a creative writing workshop facilitator, and bringing the power of the women's voices to the greater HCC community through service learning projects and performances such as what you're going to experience today. I often share with my own students that writing is powerful. Voices from inside truly embody that concept. So I am now going to give the floor to Adina Gianelli. Adina. Oh, and if you're one of my English students, just you're gonna have to stick around afterwards so I can give you back rough draft comments, okay? <laughs> Never, never again will I, will I allow you to win. 
I will not cringe and go on a binge, only to find myself hanging on like the door to a hinge. Never, never again will I be your victim. I am an addict in recovery, part of the new system. You need to discover me, find out who I am, if you want to be my fam. And who do you think you are? Just because you left a scar in my nose and on my mind, I rebuke the thought of you. You can't have my soul. Jesus is my goal. I will tell you who I am, a daughter of Zion, who has turned her back from the attack of the enemy. Devil, you are a liar, not a friend to me. But something I desire is to go higher with the Messiah. Never, never again will I allow you to win. This one is titled, Just Because. Just because I have a good heart doesn't mean you can tear it apart. Just because I choose to be saved doesn't mean you can crucify me, then bury, then bury me in the grave. Just because I don't hang out anymore doesn't mean my life's a bore. It means that finally I take my life seriously, no longer walking around dizzily. Just because you saw me having a glass of wine doesn't mean I'm no longer on Jesus' time. He is always on my mind. Just because that dude likes me and has money doesn't mean he's worthy. Just because I pray daily doesn't mean I won't face chaos. Chaos, it means I know who's the boss. Just because Sister Brown turned her nose up at me doesn't mean I have to act like a clown. I refuse to wear that frown, so I say, God bless you, Sister Brown. <laughs> Just because she's on a bed of affliction doesn't mean we should rate her story as fiction. Pay attention to the dialogue and diction. Jesus is the narrator of all prediction. Just because he did me wrong doesn't mean he owns the rights to my song. It means I'm singing <laughs> so long. <laughs> Just because he says he loves me doesn't mean he means it. So at the first sign of any wrongdoing, he's got to be there. Just because he lives in me doesn't mean I can act like I arrived. He will sit me down and raise up Sister Brown because she, she ain't acting jive. But because he lives and created the words for this rhyme, you can rest assured he steps in right on time. Those words become someone else's feelings. 
that at times they become repetitious in their minds. Your words, your voice, become someone else's song stuck on repeat. Words can be deadly where you can't beat someone with your tongue. Be a strong voice with your words, but use them to carry the right message.
please wind, if you are listening, blow me a break from all the disappointments and resentments. Please excuse me. If you can, please blow me through each and every one of my mistakes. All right, uh, this one I did write um, during my time away. Um, it's called Masterpiece. Um, I was always viewed a certain way by society after I um, kept getting in trouble over and over again for the same things. So, um, yeah, this one's a little uh, emotional for me, so bear with me, guys. Almost everyone seems to have this picture painted of who they think I am or what they think I might be. Unfortunately, not everyone has taken the time to see the real picture. Everyone refuses to see the real me, the picture God pictured, pictured of who I'm destined to be. Most people look at me and see loud, obnoxious, messy, or even disgusting. God looks at me and he sees a blessing. He looks at me and he sees bold, worthy, and deserving. Quite amazing, don't you think? I wish people would quit trying to paint a picture of how they choose to perceive me. I am actually quite the masterpiece, painted by my master, piece by piece. Some people look at me and see raging and distorted, while others will look and see confused and angry. But guess what? I'm actually much more than the negativity that taunts me, with a past that is continuously haunting me. I refuse to let my past determine the least of my personality, although I will allow it to build character towards my destiny, while at the same time help mold and shape a better picture of who I'm destined to be. So please, stop, stop trying to edit me. I refuse to be a rough draft for, t for today's society. Besides, who or what would I be if I allowed you to reconstruct God's creation of me? Who or what would I be if I allowed society to critique me? No matter how good or bad you may think of me, excuse me, no matter how good or bad you may think of this painting, I am still a masterpiece, painted by my master, piece by piece. Masterfully masterpiece indeed, with master quality in every color scheme. There's this saying, when someone shows you their true colors, do not try to paint over them. In my case, the paint was splattered before my true artwork, my, before my true artwork could even surface or be seen. They paint me green because they look at me and see money, chicks, or the finer things, versus noticing the green that was already there from the pain and agony I've endured just to reach the money green of my dreams. They paint me black, all because they don't agree with the way I react to being attacked. So I, guess, so I guess it's against the rules for me to be sad or mad. Well, that's too bad. This black, you take your brushes and splat, has become the way I react to constantly being stabbed in the back. In fact, this has become my defense, just so that I do not continue to relapse on the same family and friends who continuously cause my mental and emotional heart attacks. Sorry, I'm not done, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. <laughs> they paint me red because of my temper and my anger, as opposed to seeing the red that was already there. A red so rare, stemming from the abuse and let down from the ones I thought cared. How dare you pull out your brushes and canvas me as a menace to society? Did any of you ever bother to observe the original masterpiece? Only the one who created me can judge this, this painting. If you don't like what you see at the moment, then please just stop looking. Quit trying to determine who or what I am based on your perceptions of how you view me. Because once my work here is done, you're going to wish you had an autographed copy of me hanging up in your mental judgmental art gallery. All I ask is that people see me for me, the me God created, a work in progress, yes, but still a masterpiece. See me for who I am, not what I've been through or what I've done and experienced. But see the fine, unique Aries masterpiece 
that my master painted oh so beautifully, piece by piece. Full-blown 
terror sets in, she falls to the floor, paralyzed by impotence, imagining the worst. That awful sound returns to her lips, lips that tingle with adrenaline, adrenaline that doesn't know where to go, what to do. She is lost in panic, helpless. Where is her precious child? Is she dying? Terrifying images swirl through her fractured mind. Oh my God, what do I do? Suddenly, a sound emerges from the other end of the phone. The voice of a man. Hello, she cries. Who is this? What's happening? Is she dead? No, ma'am, she's not dead. This is Michael. I found her on the bathroom floor and gave her Narcan. The ambulance is on its way. dictates our reality. A reality never meant to be this broken, and yet here we are, expected to accept a token gesture, meant to placate when more and more suffocate on the chaos they intentionally create. Intentionally created heated debates that lead to hate and take away our focus. Divide and conquer is their motto. For did you know that Deep down, they're afraid of us. Deep down, they are afraid of us rising to power, coming together to co-create our finest hour. Deep down, they're afraid of how much we have in common because, you see, it is far more than they would have us believe. What, would they ha what they would have us believe is that fear and hate dictate our fate. But those of us who live on the edge of the front line, seeking to define the tides that rise and bind us to this life, know that we are the key to being free. So why don't you be you and I'll be me, and if we happen to disagree, can't we just allow us to just be? If necessary, simply walk away and save the topic for another day. Try hard not to be so neurotic or go atomic over something small. Stop looking for what's wrong and find what's right. Stop looking for what's wrong because after all, we're all in this together. So we might as well just try and get along. Kids running round this damn house screaming, dogs right behind them, their screams don't drown out the barking. I'm staring out the window, daydreaming. School assignments are piling, work is stacking, child's father slacking, sink full of dishes, still to do, cook, laundry, mop and sweeping, unanswered wishes, bathroom door locked, don't want the kids to hear my sobs or see me weeping. No whining and dining. No one's coming up the wretched tower. No Prince Charming. World has become too heavy to be carried. Running in place. Where are you going, mommy? I'm looking out this window for the wind for the dreams I've lost. But this is where I'm tarrying. Unhappy, unfulfilled, and unmarried. You can be anyone you want to be. You can do anything you can imagine. You can too, 
So why you cry, mommy? Baby, I'm trying. Mama's dreams and soul are slowly dying. But even within this gloom, I see the birds are flying, flocking together, coming into formation, such a freedom and liberation, an affirmation, sort of everything will be all right confirmation. which are makeshift hammocks adorned, quite content with our limbes, coquitos, and piraguas, tea bottles in Brooklyn, de Vega Baja, Fajardo, Manati, y Caguas. Where I was born, we'd stayed out all, we'd stay out late and play in the rain. Every 20, 30 minutes, we could feel the rumble of the J train, rocking our three and four story buildings, and with it, the hopes of the fray. Where I was born, Puerto Rican mommies would hang out their windows with all their weight and wishes on their pillows, praying their kids would come back before nightfall. Le decían a papito Dios, vamos a estar bien. Younger children behind her sitting on the floor, rolling a ball. Where I was born, nothing to see out there. Oh, contrary, my friend. <laughs> Discarded needles in empty lots and crack vials on every sidewalk. Never heard a drug or sex talk. Where I was born, some couldn't be. Their mommies to be boiled the malta with a contact in it. They called the authorities. The other kids got hit. Where I was born, the kids always had questions but no answers. Mommy, why does that lady have so much makeup on and her skirt is so short? No te apure de eso, just wipe your face of all that dirt. Where I was born, days were dark. Fireworks on the 4th were the only sparks. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, lurking all around us were the narcs. Waiting to catch a leaning fiend. Eyes gleam, an itch and twitch that would be willing to snitch. Where I was born, the man that stood behind sat at small square tables made of wood. Jugando dominos, just like abuelas and abuelos taught them to. Ganando con un chuchazo o un capico. <laughs> you saw them up close when mommy sent you to get fiao de la bodega, running a tab most of the welfare check will go to, and the pink and purple food stamp bookings too. Where I was born, people were dropping like flies. None of us kids understood why. It was cancer, TB, or asthma. Mommy, why do adults cry? Why can't we see our loved ones that die? If you close your eyes, you can see all that fades. El bochinche lo confirmó. It was a great big monster. Mi ángel estaban enfermo con AIDS. Where I was born, constantly looked at the clock. Papi's missing. As I ate cereal, I thought I saw him on the side of the milk box. Oh, how I ache to hear him knock. Girl, wipe your tears, pluck them roaches, sticking their antennas out the cigarette box. <laughs> this is called Right Here. <clears throat> so tempting to my flesh and pleasing to my eyes. Slowly burning till it died out. Hey beautiful, life's the breeze going by. 
the gifts bestowed remain unrealized, failing to reach the pinnacle, pessimistic, cynical. Can you hear me? I need a miracle. The little girl in peril, the woman in shambles, daddy's gone, loved drowning in women, wine, and death from his gambles. Why would a tree be so far from his yummy, yum, rotting apples? These dark days have been prophesied. A thousand times I've died. Invigorate my spirit, repair my heart, fist fighting repentance. He's winning the war inside. Play harder, I'm tired, I tried. For all I've done, I must atone. I can't do this alone. Give me strength, fill me up, there's nothing left. Puffed up with pride, envy and jealousy permeate in my soul's hollow. I've covered things I should not want and chased after evil that no one should follow. Clouds rolling in, his clutches deep within. He seduces me though he hates me, suffocates me. Where do I begin? The angel gave me a key, but I still can't get in. Forgive me. Help me fight back. Let me have me once again. Place your arms around me. Save me. Don't let this be. Perhaps it's too late. He's digging deeper into me. His voice, loud. Yours, but a faint whisper. Somehow, majestically louder. Reclaim my soul. Tell me of me who could not be prouder. Your tender whisper came roaring through the rumbling thunder. I am proud. And knowing your heart, I am always here protecting you from like minded crowd. It's literally written. <laughs> it was written about 25 years ago. The night, I, one of the nights I came out, out of prison, I stood up all night to write this. It's called Questions. Actually, look, I wrote the date. It's January 1997. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my first pieces. Was my decision incorrect? Was he the wrong choice to select? I never thought for a moment I would go through this torture and torment. I thought you would let me become his wife. I never thought you would let me fall deep in love and then take his life. Our plans consisted of family and marriage, not being a single mother pushing our carriage. Everything with each other we shared, and for the baby, how long we prepared. I was so scared to bear his child. He was wild, but inside he was tender and mild. A beautiful heart and a complex mind. No one seemed to know but I that he was so sweet, loving, and kind. Why did you take him away? A love like his I could never find. For all we strived, was it all for his daughter to be deprived? He was brave, but all he gave, I feel his soul should be saved. He should have been forgiven. He wasn't, he wasn't depraved. This tragedy I deprecate. Doesn't matter that I disapprove, it's too late. The decision on his destiny and fate long ago had been made. I would do anything, even if it meant with him places I would have to trade. Did I lose him because of a bad circumstance? Did I lose him because one of us had to pay the consequence? Could he have had another chance? There's no one on whom I can depend. Is there someone else for me you plan to send? I lost so much more than just my friend. Why did we go through the struggle and yet his life would come to such a drastic end. No one can take his place. I miss so much his tight embrace. I miss him so much in everything I see his handsome face. Give me a clue, I cannot find a trace. No one will be able to fill this empty space. Tell me, by you, I was not deceived. Tell me the devil's responsible. That can be easily believed. Break my heart and tell me for all those lonely nights I cried, there will be a reimbursement. Tell me you won't let him go to hell and dwell with the serpent. I wish I could have the privilege of once again looking into his big, light brown eyes. 
listen to his complaints or even hold them as he cries. To my total surprise, he and I will now be walking hand in hand to heaven's paradise. Is this a hidden blessing in disguise? I really thought we'd go to the promised land together. Please explain why this happened, I cannot understand. I've endured so much pain and I feel so much sorrow. I truly doubt the sun will shine tomorrow. I refuse to accept that this is your doing, or worse, that this may be your pleasure to make my one and only true love a buried treasure. To make me go through this detriment and put me through this agonizing predicament. Life has become a never-ending storm to take him from me and make him into another form. With him, I was very entrenched. You took him and like your very own son, he was sacrificed. I was so in love and enchanted. Was it because we took life, love, and you, the Lord, for granted? We made magic. We had such a, we had a special type of chemistry. It was tragic, but I know now it's just your definition of geography. I'm still here, for which I am thankful, but I do beg and pray you send me another angel who can be sweet and sensitive. I am still young, I have all my life to live, so I need someone who is worthy of all the love I have to give. You are what you respond to. 
So it doesn't matter what they, how they choose to view you, what they choose to call you, what they think you are, what they say you are, you are what you respond to. So somebody walks in the room and says, oh, hey, you, da 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 I would just, so you walk in the room and say, hey, look at that millionaire over there. I'm like, <laughs> talk about me? So James just, yeah, I like that you found a way to um, relate to me. And so I take it one day at a time still to this day. Like, I'm not whatever you think of me. And I don't want, and I don't want whatever, whatever um, I've been through in my life or whatever's a part of my life to affect how it's supposed to be lived. I'm not going to use any of that as a crutch or as an excuse as to why I didn't succeed in life. I use as fuel for my writing. So if you have any inclination to turn your experiences into poems. teacher my senior year who's been there for me through thick and thin. He's more than a teacher, he's more than a friend. He was our school psychologist, Mr. Kane. He knew other classes were going to be tough, so he always told me to hang in there. He'd be there if things got rough. His office door would always be open if I needed him to come, if I need to come in, say hi, to sit down, or if I needed him for anything. After I graduated, I could come over to his house. We, we became more than teacher and student. We became best friends. He'd always tell me I meant a lot to him. And it always made me feel special when I heard those words. One day he left me and went to heaven. I missed the man dearly, but now I know he's looking down. He's up there with my grandma Mac both loving me and looking down. And because they are proud, I don't know what I would do without him in my life. You see, he's always looking over me, and that, and that was, and was there for me too.
the poem's amazing. So they give me strength, just their smiles come in like, oh, you're here. And I'm like, I'm not a poet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, like listening to them helps me flow and like helps me like, like open up to my pain because like, you know, breathing doesn't have a number of years or like how long can you grieve? So like every day I can grieve, but coming to this group helps me get a little bit happier and knowing that my mom's in a better place and I can like relate to what's going on and they give me strength. I learned that there's beauty in humanity, no matter whether you're on the bottom or you're on the top. You, there's so much to learn from each person you encounter yourself with. Like I could be at the bus stop sitting, or I could, you know, even even conversations that I strike up with people who, you know, are asking for money at the light, or you know, people at church, or people at NA, or teachers, professors. Like there's so much beauty that can come from every single person that uh, I don't know it just I nobody can bring you down unless you want to you know what I mean unless it, that's a choice it's like you said it's a choice you know what I mean and but you can learn so much from from, from anybody and, and when you learn to appreciate humanity you can get a, you can move along throughout many social circles and, and still be you. Massachusetts, I was looking for everything and anything, prison reform, re-entry, criminal justice stuff, and I really couldn't find it. And I ended up taking a job with Neighbor to Neighbor, so I had Katie's job before her, and um, I actually found this group through that. So in that work, I was supposed to teach them how to advocate for legislation, um, the criminal justice reform that passed in 2018. But instead, I end up becoming a part of them, and they welcome me like a sister. And I think, you know, in, in a lot of cases, water is thicker than blood, right? And friends become family. Um, also, the women that I came in contact with, like my professor, one of my professors, um, Gretchen, right? Like, I'm looking at these women, you know, they're older, but I'm looking at them as mentors, and I realize after some years that they would reach out to me as well and I'm like oh wow they actually think of me as a friend you know what I mean but I, it happened organically I didn't really do that purposely because I didn't think that they're that, that I could do that or you know to be friends with these older white women like thinking <laughs> what can they offer me they offer me a lot and the wisdom is real and there's a lot of it and I feel free to call any one of them and any one of my sisters or venting, talking, asking for advice. Hey, I need a reference. <laughs> Can you provide me one? But it, it, it's a community that became what it is organically, and I'm very grateful for it. So for me, um, I find, what was the question? Where do I find my strength, right? Um, so, I'm, I'm in recovery. I will be having eight years this summer. So I say that to say my strength, I think back of when I was using and when I was out there, um, how I was used. You know, when, when people, when I was out there smoking crack and selling myself, doing everything and everything under the sun to get high. A lot of people then, oh, I will help you. But if there, I, there was something, there was a motive behind it. I had to give something up. I had to give a part of me up. And um, and today, you know, when I when I started in my in my sobriety, when I started in my walk, you know, I my strength started becoming that I wanted to be that help that I didn't have in my 
So um, I, you know, I got I got affiliated with AISS. I don't know if you guys know what that is. Is oh my gosh, they changed the name. You know, oh, so 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 thank you. <laughs> I just learned the acronym AISS. It's part of the sheriff's department, and in that, and in that, I, you know, I started. Um, I started doing um, GED classes there. I became part of the women's group there. And I started. I became a mentee. I became a mentee, and then became the mentor. Um, and those are my strengths. Those are my pillars. I started. You know, you let go of the old things. I needed to replace the negative with positive things, and AISS did that for me. And you know, and just finding strength and um, just wanting to help someone with nothing attached. Wanting to help, like Sonia just said, I'll be seeing people, you know, handling or whatever. You know, God want to talk to me to help this person. I won't give you money, but you hungry, let's go to the store, I'll buy you whatever you want. You know, I'll, I'll spend my last dollar. And it's just helping, like genuinely helping people is what gives me strength. Monday, I was in my sociology class at Cambridge College. There was VFI talking, talk, talking about their group, and I, I, I couldn't wait to join them. I started crying. I was like, oh my God, I write poetry, and they, they were incarcerated like I was, and they were using like I was, and, and I, it took me maybe about six months later, and I joined them. And, um, I don't regret that at all. Good question. Thank you for asking that. So um, before uh, my incarceration, I had no respect of person. Like I didn't care who you were, you know, what your authority was, what type of badge you held. Like I just had no respect of person. No one was exempt from my temper. No one was exempt from my anger. 
Um, and then after my incarceration and being involved in certain groups and programs, I learned how to respect authority. I learned that certain people are in certain positions for a reason, whether I like that or not. Like, they're in that role for, to help me for, you know? Um, like, they, like uh, as my facilitators, they're the facilitators for a reason. So whether I like how the group is ran or not, the, I, I learned how to agree with certain things. Like, I'm just giving an example. I learned how to agree with certain things because um, if I wanted to receive the proper help that I needed, I had to humble myself. Versus, oh, you're not my mom, so you're not gonna tell me how to do this. I don't have to listen to you. So I learned, okay, this person's in that position for a reason. Let me respect what they have to say. Let me respect, um, and that's helped me a lot. I've learned how to accept help. I've learned how to take corrective criticism. And it's, it's um, made me a better woman to this day. So before, before, prior to incarceration in groups and writing and all of this, having somebody that can agree with you, I was, um, I didn't feel like anybody could understand or relate to me. I was just always, oh, don't talk, don't talk at me. Don't tell me what to do. And now I know there's other people that, you know, they'll let me, like, we understand you're not talking at us. This is just your way of expressing yourself. So um, it's been very helpful for me with that. And that, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. I learned um, to put my pride to the side. So like Rayana, right? She, um, I was wild, crazy. Like I've been in jail since like, going to jail since 2009 was like for one fight. Like, you know, like it wasn't doing girl. It was just like one fight, but I had anger because my mom was incarcerated. My dad was incarcerated. So at first I didn't want it. I was just like, uh, like in and out of jail, like I didn't learn. And then now I wanted it. So I, I've been out of jail for three years now, and now I just take it in. Because now I gotta like, we have to say if if you're on time, you're late, and if you're, you know, so if you're early, you're on time. If you're early, you're on time. So like I'm learning to like to have structure. I'm learning obedience. I'm learning that. I can do this. Like I'm learning that I'm not a statistic. I'm, you know, my daughter is 19 years old. I had a kid at 16, and she's in John Hopkins on a full scholarship. <laughs> so I'm learning, like, get the support. It's, it's here. Like, you know, you have to want it. You have to want the help. Like, this is like a sisterhood, and I and I need that sisterhood. You know, we have the friends, and we have that, but you need that positive sisterhood, like when you need that referral, when you need that, hey, I can't do this right now. Rihanna called me this morning. I was not gonna make it. I was like, it's raining, um, feel good. And I was making excuses, but I'm like, no, this is something I want. Yeah. She texted me like, good morning, she did too. That, and that's what you need. Because sometimes you're feeling down and your friends excite you like, and she, my friend right here in the crowd, like she's always here. So coming into VFI really gave me purpose. And then connecting more deeply with people in recovery as a result of that, um, and especially other women, uh, and even before this, just as someone in long-term recovery, um, just learning humility and learning not to judge and um, being able to be given the opportunity to learn the gift of holding space for people that is unconditional is I think one of the biggest gifts and shifts for me. Um, I've learned how to deeply just listen and be there and not, um, not judge and not uh, try to correct or anything, just 
be there. And um, I think that if more people could just be present for others in that way in the world, that it would make for a much nicer world for us. So I'm really grateful for all of you all for accepting me.
show up at the state house and write some letters and, and really change the system that is that is working how it is intended, which is racist and classist. Um, we'd love to have you involved. documentary on BFI is going to be shown at Greenfield Community College on May 1st at 6 p.m. There's going to be a dinner and a showing and then a Q&A panel afterwards. So if any of y'all want to come out and see the movie, you haven't seen it yet, please do come check it out. All right, so let's give a round of applause to all of our